Hey, thanks for coming to another Take It Apart day. We are going to take this apart. This is an old blender that is a little broken. We bought a new one, so I wanted to take this one apart. Now, when we're taking apart stuff that plugs into outlets, we always make sure we unplug it because you never know what you're going to touch on accident, even if you're super careful. So, let's see what's inside of this. Now, on the bottom there's four screws, and most of them are just a normal Phillips. And then, but one of them is different. I'll show you when I get it out. Okay, Let's see if I can get it out. Okay, now I'm working on the special screw. And I figured out that this can work as well because I don't have the exact right screwdriver. Okay. All right. So we'll take that apart. Wowzers. That's a lot of flour and stuff inside of this. That's fun. Okay. So most of them were this kind of screw, but one of them was this triangle piece. And I usually have a bit that will fit into this, but this would not fit into this hole. So I had to improvise and use a flathead that would fit just barely into there to unscrew it. So I'm just glad that wasn't really, really tight. Sometimes you have to improvise when you're taking stuff apart. And we don't care if we break this because it's already half broken. Okay, so we have the cord and it goes in and it goes into here. And that is used to hold the cord from pulling on the rest of it. So like if you accidentally dropped it and you grabbed it by the cord, it wouldn't pull the cord out of the machine. Let me show you how they do that. Sometimes they make knots so that it won't go through this hole right here where the cord goes in. And sometimes they make knots around stuff. This one, it looks like they splice this into two different cords and then tied a knot. Okay, can you see that? They almost turned it into like a pretzel. And then put it around these posts and then screwed this onto the posts so that way the cord can't yank out of this hole. But usually just a simple knot will be good enough. So one of these is the positive and one of these is the negative. But let's keep taking it apart. This is gonna be really messy. That screwdriver barely fits down in there. There we go, yay. For some reason, I have a hard time keeping Phillips screwdrivers. I have loads of flatheads, but when it comes to Phillips screwdrivers, they just get used so much that they get left random places. Okay, let's see if we can pull this out. I don't think we're going to be able to pull it out all the way because without cutting wires at least. See, that's coming out, that switch. But the turbo is not coming out for some reason. Okay, I'm going to cut this right here. So that way, in case that wire needs to go through the handle, because look, it, it like goes down in through the handle and then... But sometimes, I think this one, in here, see how this changes from white to gray? I think we need to take this gray part off, and it's just a little clip that we need to push past. Come on. 
See that? There we go. I probably didn't even need to. All right, let's see how this part works. So normally, that is off. Guessing that this is where the turbo works. And then the button. Yep, there we go. Okay, so the turbo button. So this must be the power. And the power goes into this little switch right here. And normally, okay, yep. You can see right here it says, Normally open, normally closed. That NO means normally open, the NC means normally closed. If you don't have the turbo down, this button, then it goes to, I'm having a brain freeze right now. So it would, let's say it goes to this one. The power will go in and then through this one. And then if you have the turbo down, it pushes that little button right here. Can you hear that click? So you push this, the turbo down, and it pushes that button in. So instead of the power going through here, it goes through here. It goes to that other wire. So let's see how and where that goes. All right, there we go. Okay. So. There's a lot of fun switches in this one. This is usually how um, switches with multiple settings, like this one had six different speeds. So this would be in the off position, and then that's speed one. P2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And how that works, it just closes a circuit according to which wire it's contacting. This circuit only has a certain number, amount of power going through it. This circuit has a little bit more. This circuit has a little bit more. This circuit has the most all the way at the end. Same thing with this, the turbo. You have the power going in, and if the turbo's not on, it goes through this one, which is like half as powerful. And then if you press the turbo button, it goes, instead of going through this one, it goes out and over through this one and adds extra power to your blender. And so that's kind of neat how that works. Let's see. I don't know if there's fuses in here. There, pro there might be, or it just might go. There's so much powder in here, it's hard to tell. <laughs> But it's just neat how these switches control how much power it goes through by just depending on which circuit it closes. When I say closes, that means it completes that circuit, and then that means that there's power going through it. Let's see. There we go. Let's get this out of the way. I'm gonna have a big mess to clean up. Okay, there's a shield. So usually things are held on by either screws or like little clips. And that one's held on by a clip. Just like this was held onto there by a little clip. Now this fan probably just turns to keep the motor cool. But you can, but anyways. You stick the blender pieces into here and into here, and these gears should be turning at the same time. When you turn this, are both of them turning? Yeah, very slowly, because the motor's only moving very slowly, because I can only turn it so fast. But see how that's turning? Turning these things, and that's what turns the blenders. But 
it's really neat to see that this is on a gear worm. This this part is a gear a worm gear. You know how you see it's like a spiral. Let's see right there that metal shaft, and then that worm gear turns these things at the same time. But this is so messed up and so broken down that that a lot of these parts of this gear is just worn out completely. And this one a little bit too. That's crazy. We have had this blender for a long time. I wonder if I can run it on DC power. Let's try 15 volts. I'm just gonna cut this completely right here. We do not need that cord. But we need to expose the wire. If you don't squeeze the snip it all the way, you can sometimes strip wires like this without wire strippers. I have wire strippers, I'm just not grabbing them. Sometimes you can just kind of crimp, crimp around it. you're stubborn sometimes and you want to get it with what you've got because that's what you grab first and then you don't want to there we go okay let's see what happens okay the circuits open there's not a complete circuit right there so we'll just see what happens nothing may happen Oh, what did I do? Ah. We got it working. So the motor's fine. It's just that these gears right here on these sides are so worn out in places that it won't spin. Let's turn it up to 24 volts. <laughs> That's definitely not enough power to use as a blender. But that makes it pretty fun. all the way up and then I'm going to push the turbo button can you hear the difference I'm going to push it down again okay I'm going to let go all right Huh. That's so much fun. Okay, that's all. I just wanted to take this apart and see what it does.